Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the broadcast today. Political consultant Cheryl Blomstrom joins us for a fascinating show. She's here for the whole program on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. We started this community garden to grow more than fresh food. We're growing a stronger, healthier future in Nevada, but not without help. Tom Steyer knows real change starts at the grassroots. That's why he rallied Nevadans to win clean energy and teamed with farmers to bring fresh produce to public schools. As president, Tom will unite us to save our planet. That's why I'm caucusing for Tom. I'm Tom Steyer and I approve this message. Hello, is this D&D &D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D &D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to the program Cheryl Blomstrom. She is a political consultant. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Thanks, Sam. And we are taping this on the Wednesday of the debate. Yeah. So the debate has not occurred yet. So you have chances to be absolutely right or dead wrong in some of these things here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the odds of that, since we are in the state of Nevada. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> let's take odds. Well, let's start out with a piece of news that broke yesterday, okay. um, which was that the president is uh, going to pardon Michael Milken. Did pardon Michael Milken. Did pardon. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, he has had a tremendous effect you know, across the country, but in particular in northern Nevada, uh, has been a huge investor on, and helped other people become investors in a lot of projects that are happening in the Reno area, um, at uh, the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. New York Times tried to go after him um, a couple of months ago talking about undue influence, which turned out to be a story that went absolutely nowhere. Um, but what do you think about this? Uh, actually, in terms of Michael Milken, because he has served his term, I'm less concerned. You mean his time in jail? I'm sorry, yeah, his yeah. time in jail. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah my bad. <laughs> but he, he, he did the crime, he served the time, he got out, and now he's been given clemency or pardon. And I'm not sure which was which. He's, he did 11 people, Trump pardoned or clemency. It, it was a pardon, yeah. So it was a pardon. So his, his record is expunged, basically. Um, I think that what he has done, I think maybe he he took that time in prison to contemplate his future and I think he's put himself on a path to really live a good life. So I don't have a problem with, with his being pardoned. Some of the others, maybe not so much. Well, let's, let's um, make a comparison here. Sure. And I don't know if you remember this case because it's a long time ago, it's the 1960s. Um, John Perfumo uh, was the war minister for Britain. Okay. And he was busted, and there's a movie called Scandal, not the Olivia Pope story, but an, an older movie called Scandal that tells the story. Um, he was the war minister, and he was sleeping with a prostitute who also happened to be sleeping with the head of the KGB in London at <laughs> the same time. And he, you know, the war minister is like the Secretary of Defense would be in the United States. He was forced to resign. 
spent the next 25 years working in the poorest parts of London, helping the poor, and at the end of it was given a knighthood and became back into the society. And I draw a comparison there. As you say, um, he committed the crime, he pled guilty, he did the time, uh, he did get a, an early reduction in his sentence, uh, but at the same time he has given millions and millions of dollars in charitable causes and, you know, like I say, the investment that we've seen just alone in North Nevada has mm -hmm. been phenomenal. So, well, investment not just in Northern Nevada, but he's invested very heavily in prostate cancer research. And which he suffers from. And that is one of the cancers that we're seeing some decline in. You know, it, uh, what, last week, the Cancer Society said that we are seeing reductions, in, uh, substantial reductions in, in the fatality of cancers. He's played a role in that. I mean, that's important. Well, an interesting day. When I, when I saw that pop up on the news feed yesterday, I was like, wow, fascinating. Absolutely. Um, so uh, the, uh, the, all the candidates are in Nevada, obviously, this week, right. uh, going nuts, uh, trying to meet with as many people as possible. Uh, the culinary union has been fascinating uh, because even though uh, Bernie Sanders is incredibly popular in the Silver State, it would appear, um, they do not want Medicare for all because they have this incredible, uh, you know, health plan that they put together. Um, a, a, is there any surprise or just no surprise in the fact that the culinary is not opposing Bernie Sanders but n made no declaration in this race, and uh, is but it, but is putting out the message that we have a great health plan? Yeah, they do have a great health plan, and they've bargained for it. And I would submit that they've bargained away other things, you know, everything in a, in a negotiation like that as a trade. And so they've probably traded, you know, whatever hourly wage or some other thing to be able to have and aggregate that kind of health care for their folks. So um, I, as you look at the race as it sits, and as we say, we're taping this the Wednesday of the debate before the final caucus on Saturday. Um, Joe Biden, is he regaining any traction in the Silver State? No, I don't see it. I saw a giant mailer that was in my mailbox, um, and that seemed like just spending money. Yeah, I think that's, I didn't see a mailer, so maybe not aimed at me, right. maybe aimed at Reno and Las Vegas. We, we have a division in our household of, of, ah, uh, of who's registered, too. so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then you would just <laughs> cheated on that one. We have the same, well, I'm not sure it's the same debate, but we are divided, but we definitely are divided in our household. Yeah, and it's interesting because we're not so much divided in our household. We just want to be able to vote in all the primaries and uh. whatever. <laughs> and I don't go to caucuses because I'm not going to stand publicly and represent right. who I stand for. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the caucus process. Um, I caucused in 20 or 2008 in 2012, but I, I will not caucus this time. Because? I don't, I don't necessarily want to be that public. I agree with you that my vote should be my, it is my voice, but I kind of want it to be my private voice. Uh, Amy Klobuchar. Yes, um, we were talking about A her. fascinating rise. Absolutely. Um, and the thing that's even more fascinating is how much money goes along with that rise in popularity. Yes. I mean, in one debate, she raised $3 million, and by the time that week was up, it was over $10 million, mm -hmm. and suddenly she became, to an extent, competitive. Competitive, absolutely. I'm impressed with her. Uh, there's a, we were talking about her earlier this morning. She's got a Minnesota nice thing going on that I think is broadly appealing to the middle of the country. You know, the place where you need to go and gather those electoral college votes, she appeals to those folks. Um, I also have a comparison here, and, and it may strike you as a weird comparison. As you know, one of the knocks against Amy Klobuchar early in the campaign was that she is mean to her staff. She's tough on them. Now, hang on. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, but, as a but woman boss, I may have something to say and, about and, that. And, and that's <laughs> fine. That's why you're here. Yeah. Um, but I thought to myself, that's an interesting comparison with another person who, on television in public, um, puts, uh, has a, a very nice personality, but in private is a little tougher. Kathy Augustine, our former state treasurer. 
um, was the same kind of person. She could be as charming, and I got along with her extremely well, never had a bad word with her. But again, the knock against her was that she was very tough on her employees, and she said, hey, it was the way I was brought up in the business, and I'm just reflecting that. Now, the floor is yours, Cheryl. <laughs> I had a run-in with Kathy Augustine at one point, um, and she was less than truthful about my position, and she was less than truthful to someone who I valued. And that person came to me and said, so what's this about? And I said, it's nonsense, and let me show you. And I'm kind of detail-oriented, you may have noticed that. <laughs> yes. So I whipped out a spreadsheet and said, here, 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 and here. And he said, thank you, what do I do? And I said, for me, I would recommend not giving her any money because I don't think that kind of behavior should be rewarded. And he took my advice. <laughs> and I was on her um, bad guy list for the rest of time. Um, I don't make that same comparison. I think Kathy Augustine was a big time doer of the expedient. Okay, so then, then tell us about Amy Klobuchar and being tough on employees. You know, when you have employees, sometimes you have to be tough. When you have an exacting standard and you have constituency that you need to meet, you know, she was a prosecutor, so there's this group of people that she needs to, to take care of. And when she was that prosecutorial role, she has to prosecute the bad guys, and that means you've got to get your T's crossed and your I's dotted in every duck in a row. And if you've got somebody on your staff who's not performing at that level, sometimes it requires toughness. All right, on that note, let's take a break and we will come back and, uh, and talk about Bernie Sanders right after this. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Cheryl Blomstrom. She's a political consultant. Um, so, Bernie Sanders. Um, at, at this point, I mean, there are a lot of people buying into the dream. Um, but how realistic is that? And this, this fight already uh, between he and Michael Bloomberg, um, you know, the knock on Bernie from a lot of people is he's been in Congress a long time and gotten absolutely nothing done. Correct. Um, Bloomberg ran the city of New York for 12 years. There are knocks against him as well. But if you look at the overall picture, 
Uh, he got reelected twice and elected three times, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Bernie's dream. I don't share Bernie's dream, first of all. Um, I don't think it's practical. I think that it will fundamentally alter the state of the state of the United States. I, I don't think at the end of the day it's the answer that we as a country need. There are, there are clearly things that need to be corrected. There are, you know, we've, we've seen a pendulum swing pretty far to the, uh, to use one of his phrases, 1%. I think there needs to be a way to, to have the other 99% feel like they're participating both in our democracy, but in our economy, in our social state, in, in the fundamental principles that have guided this nation for all these years, I think people are feeling, not necessarily because it's accurate, but they're feeling left out. Is that a reality or is that the media? Some of each, absolutely. There is nothing that Trump can do right now nothing as far as I can see that the media would find acceptable with some notable media exceptions and you know who they are. But generally speaking, Trump can do no right. Um, it's, it's interesting to see how solid, and I don't recall, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't recall in my lifetime a divide so strong and complete between either you're for Trump and you're 100% for Trump or you're 100% against him. I agree, and I am neither of those. So I, I'm wandering around in that weird middle right now. Um, I do not like his style at all. It is anathema to me as a woman, as a mother, you know, as a, as a person with a heart. <laughs> I don't like where he is. Uh, his, somebody needs to break his phone. That would be the, a wonderful first step. I, that's not going to happen. But I really don't like his style. But some of the things he's done make sense to me. S a few of the things he's done are really good. And some of the stuff he's done is just ridiculous. But do you think at the end of the day, whether you support him or not, and I'm talking in people in general, right. that he has kept to his campaign promises? For and, the most and part. And continues on to attempt to do that. I think he attempts to do that, and I think that he has probably not honed as closely to his campaign promises as, you know, in 2015, 2016, as he was making those promises. They were pretty succinct and they were pretty clear. And I think he's found gray area because you don't go to Washington as the president and get your way 100% of the time. It just doesn't work. And I think he's used to, as, a, as a, a developer and, you know, the personality that he had that drove him into this to begin with, he's not used to not getting his way. So I think he talks a better game than he walks. You know what's interesting? Um, as you know, I was just in Hawaii yes. and, and came across an obscure television channel. Um, and on there was a literally 30-year-old interview with him, an hour-long interview with Joan Rivers. No way. And it was fascinating huh. to see Donald Trump, w now with Marla Maples, he had divorced his previous wife. Right. Um, he was saying the same things he's saying today, except he was charming and funny. Um, and Joan Rivers agreed with him on a lot of issues, for example, like the media. And you know, she was a, a strong liberal. I yeah, mean, there uh, was yeah. no two ways and, about and that. And a media diva. Yes, and, uh, and, but had been like Trump attacked. He talked about how you know, the number of women he was allegedly supposed to have dated, if he had been doing that, it would have been amazing, but you know, it wasn't true and he was you know, in fights. The only newspaper he defended was the New York Times, which is kind of ironic at this point Entirely. in time. Entirely. But if you can find this, and I guess uh, you can probably go to YouTube and yeah. find it, um, it's the Joan Rivers daytime talk show. Okay. It's an hour long interview with Trump. And I tell you, it, it was fascinating. Let's take another break and we'll come right back.
Take a look at this, Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer, surging in Nevada. This is working for Tom Steyer, surging in South Carolina. I don't think it's just resources. Surging in two new polls out of Nevada and South Carolina. Polling at double digits, up 11 points from October. That is dramatic. I'm saying we have a broken government. That's what's going on in Washington, D.C. It's been bought by corporations, and my question to the American people is, who do you think is going to change that? I'm Tom Steyer, and I approve this message. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, Give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Cheryl Blomstrom, the political consultant. Um, I just wanted to throw in one quick thing before we move on to the next couple of uh, people here. Mm -hmm. And once again, for those listening and watching, uh, we're taping this the day of the debate. So the, we don't know the results as we sit here today of the caucus, let alone anything else. But I wanted to point out that Ronald Reagan was the first president to really directly communicate with the American people and bypass the media. He did his Sunday morning radio talks and he, he utilized the, the Oval Office as a direct way to communicate with the public. And I think Ronald, I, I'm the, Donald Trump has picked up on that and used the tools of the modern era that even though it drives some people completely crazy with his tweeting, but at the same time, I think that that is a direct pi pipeline where he bypasses everything else and says whatever the heck he wants with no filter. And he says whatever the heck he wants, and he drives the news cycle for the next 24 hours. And before that 24 hours is up, he's got his next rant or troll or whatever else out there. And so he's driving the next cycle and the next cycle and the next cycle. It's incredible use of media outrage. Remember the Pentagon Papers? I do. Okay. So we had our version of the Pentagon Papers a couple of months ago when the uh, New York Times and the Washington Post put out this huge story saying that basically the Afghanistan war had been lost almost since day one. Mm -hmm. To me that was our Pentagon Papers. Its coverage after almost. that first couple of days, yeah. almost zero. Because you know how much money we have spent yes, in Afghanistan for no reason? Well, How many people have died for no lot. reason? And what we have accomplished there, which is essentially zero. Um, it's zero and not. Uh, the Middle East is the topic for another 27 programs. But I think... Well, actually, let's move it over to Asia, because it's really... <laughs> yeah, you know. same thing. <laughs> but the point is, Nature abhors a vacuum, principle of physics. The Middle East abhors a vacuum also. And if we aren't there, somebody else is there. And that is there is the Russians and the Chinese. And, and they, are, they have zero good intentions towards us. All right, a debate for another day. Yes, um, Okay, is Elizabeth Warren done? I don't think so. Um, I think... I don't think she's going to be the president. I don't think she's going to be the nominee. But I, th I think she's still riding for the brand. And I think she has real potential as the vice president. Uh, Pete Buttigieg. Buttigieg. <sighs> I like him. 
I don't think he has enough seasoning yet, spoken as an ageist, apparently. But I, I don't think the mayor of South Bend is sufficient experience to run the greatest nation in the world. And I, you're going to come back and say, well, Trump had no political experience, but Trump had New York political experience in his development career. There's a lot of politics that goes into that. And so he had some notion of how it worked. And not everything that he's done has been particularly politically astute either. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I don't think Mayor Pete is ready yet, but he's got a tremendous future. I see an amazing future for him. And that's where we have to leave it. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. <laughs> that was my last word. <laughs> that was your last word. <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> a bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. You can always watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Nevada Newsmakers. We'll see you on the next broadcast.